Hey, what's up everybody? This is Gerson Ribeiro and this is my review for the movie The Invisible Man 2020. In this video, I'm going to give my review of the movie The Invisible Man and tell you guys what, in my opinion, are the best and worst aspects of the movie. I'm going to start with the bad aspects of the movie first. As a matter of fact, aspect, because there's only one aspect of the movie that I didn't particularly like. And that aspect is the fact that the movie doesn't actually earn its R rating. The Invisible Man is rated R and it didn't actually earn the R rating because there are like only four curse words in the movie and two, actually maybe two and a half uh, violent scenes in the movie. The real scares come from the suspension and the tension that the movie gives us for not knowing where the Invisible Man is and whether or not the protagonist of the movie is going insane because there are some scenes we don't even believe there is an invisible man now going on the pros I the first pro has to be Elizabeth Moss's acting she was absolutely phenomenal in this movie for those of you that doesn't know Elizabeth Moss is the actress that, pay, that plays off Glenn in the Hulu show The Handmaid's Tale and she's absolutely amazing in this movie. It really irritates me that this movie was made so much early in this year. Okay, it just came out on February. And movies that came this early in the year, they basically come out to die. You know, they don't get nominated to any awards or anything like that. And her performance was absolutely award worthy. She was 100% awesome in this movie. She basically carries the entire movie on her back by herself. The second great aspect of the movie is the way that uses tension to scare us. This is why I mentioned on my con session. The way this movie uses the tension to scare us is like one of the scariest things I ever seen in a long time. It basically makes us doubt ourselves whether or not the invisible man exists and if he exists it makes us just as paranoid as the protagonist is because we don't know where he is. He could be in front of her, he could be behind her back. We never know where he is and what he's gonna do next. And that's an, the movie uses this in spectacular fashion. The third great aspect of the movie is that it's a modern take on the Invisible Man because in the book, the Invisible Man is a scientist that creates a formula that he drinks it up and becomes invisible. And at the same time, he drives him insane. And in this movie, I'm not going to say how the Invisible Man becomes invisible because that will be a big spoiler. But I'm going to tell you, it's a much different and much cooler modern take on the way he becomes invisible. But I'm going to give you guys a hint. This movie will be perfect as an episode of Black Mirror. So if you guys have seen Black Mirror, you might get a little hint of how he becomes invisible. Another great aspect of the movie is that it has a subtle message of female empowerment. Because we have a female protagonist fighting out the invisible man. And in my opinion, this movie managed to make he managed to succeed where Charlie's Angels, the 2019 version, failed. Because the Charlie's Angels movie, he tried to hammer home there was a movie about female empowerment, but it exaggerated too much at the point that every male character in that movie was kind of a cartoon villain, you know? The female empowerment message didn't come out organically in that movie, but in The Invisible Man, it did. It was kind of the same thing with the Wonder Woman movie and the Captain Marvel movie. Because Wonder Woman was just a superhero movie with a female protagonist. And Captain Marvel was made to show, because Marvel wanted to show the watchers that they were misogynistic. And then they ended up taking like 10 years to make a movie about a female superhero. They had a lot of not so subtle message about feminism. And on the other hand, Wonder Woman, it took three years, actually four years after the DC Universe began, and it made a much better movie with a much better message about female empowerment. It was the same difference. 
between the Invisible Man and Charlie's Angels. The Invisible Man managed to express what he wanted to say and not rub it in the spectators faces, you know, they made it in a more natural way. The last great aspect I want to talk about is the way that this movie, I'm not gonna say how it ends, but I'm going to tell that the end sets up a sequel, but it sets up in a regular way, you know, not like every other Hollywood movie nowadays, that instead of making, instead of ending their story where it's supposed to end, it tries to set up a sequel to make a cash grab. And like 90% of those movies don't end up making sequels. But I'm pretty sure The Invisible Man will get a sequel because it's already a huge box office success. And the way it sets up the sequel, it sets it up like it shows an interesting story, you know, that has the potential to happen. So I really think that if it happens, and I'm really sure it will, it'll be a great movie. All right, everybody. So that was my review for the 2020 version of The Invisible Man. I really hope everybody liked and I'll see you next time with another video. Bye bye.